February 9th, and today we're talking about a new type of participle for all of you. And participle. Yes, thank you. Today we're talking about future active participles, which is part two of our three-part participial adventure. So the basic gist of a participle is that it's an adjective, where a noun is described by an action. In the case of a perfect passive participle, a noun is being described by an action done to it in the past. In our current realm, we're going to talk about future active participles. And in a future active participle, we are describing a noun by an action that the noun itself will complete sometime in the future. Okay? So we'll write that whole thing out. Describes a noun that by an action that it itself ipse ipsa ipsud will complete in the future. Sound reasonable so far? We also have a sort of stock translation for the future active participle. And the translation that you can use 100% of the time is uh, about to <coughs> verb. <coughs> so, um, uh, Magistra, about to choke, looked for her water bottle, right? Um, <clears throat> Ridley, about to do her homework, uh, found a desk. All right, so you're describing a noun by an action that it will complete all by itself in the future. <clears throat> the good news for you is that the Latin forms of future active participles are fairly straightforward. <coughs> The Latin form of a future active participle starts with the fourth principal part. Sound good so far? You love the fourth principal part. You've memorized all of them that exist. Yeah. Wink, wink. Nudge, nudge. <clears throat> and then you're going to add, that's an addition sign. You're going to add the letters U. R before the U.S. Which, of course, is super convenient because the word future has you are in it and you add the letters you are to make it a future. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <coughs> So, some samples for you. Um, let's do dictus, fourth principal part from dico, dicere. We're going to add you are, and we're going to get dicturus. Monetus, the fourth principal part from moneo, monere. Add you are, and you get monetus. Gesundheit. Dictaris would roughly translate to about to say. You could do about to tell, about to talk. Monitorus, about to warn. 
Okay? This about to translation works with any verb. Done. Does the about to part have to be a cause? Does it have to be a cause separating from like that? Like if you like, like Don was about to run. You can absolutely do it with just was or just is. You know, Karina is about to practice the violin. And then you're describing her by this, actually. Like change about the nope. Nope. Yeah. Don't some principal like principal parts already have UI UX? Great question. That's exactly where I was going. It's almost like Rachel has already seen a swiveled portion of this before. Actually, I don't think I don't think there is one. So you know, this is this is just her own original thought. So, <clears throat> what do you do with a fourth principal part? You can write this question out as well. That already has. U R U S. Here's the dramatic answer to your question. Nothing, exactly. <laughs> what do you mean? Future active will always have a UR. Nothing else has a UR. So there's no real context well, involved. Like, no. Well, so <clears throat> to to the question to the answer of nothing. Here's the thing: you are not allowed to take the U R out of U R U S. Also, you are not allowed to add another U R if you already have one. Auroras, yeah. So, so you may not add a U R to the equation. Also, you may not take it out. Delete. Well, <clears throat> what would be, what would you do, or what would you get, rather, if you took the er out of that, which is the, which is the, Okay, right. So, conclusion number one, if you may not delete the UR from one of these verbs, you will never have a perfect passive participle. Impossible. And if you cannot add a UR, but it already has one, then you can safely assume that the fourth principal part is, right then and there, your future active participle without changing anything. So generally, <clears throat> this rule applies to verbs that can't be made passive because of the virtue of their translation. For example, we have um, <laughs> dormitoris. In its future active participle, it means about to sleep. Jonah, about to sleep, cuddled up with his teddy bear. Aww. Makes sense, right? But if you were to take the UR out, you cannot say having been slept. The sleep, having been slept by me, was glorious. That's, it just doesn't work. Similarly, you have monstrous. You know what that verb is from? Remain, right. You can say, about to remain, right? Olivia, about to remain at home for two weeks, you know, bought lots of bread and milk. If you're not vegan, you know. <clears throat> but you can't do it the other way. You can't have monsus and say, the house, having been remained in for two weeks, it's just clunky. 
Okay? So in a way, it saves you from having to think about, oh, well, should I make this passive or should I try to put passive endings on? You'll never have one of these on a passive test. Right? So you can't ever make it passive in the perfect passive participle. All right. <clears throat> um, do you want a Latin sentence with a future active participle? No. How about just a short one? Uh, I can't do three. I can do I can do four. Okay. The teacher, about to scold Sextus, was shouting, or began to shout. Four words. Not bad. Any questions about future active participles? Okay, good. The teacher, oh, sorry, I misspelled it. Reprehend. The teacher, about to scold Sextus, began to shout. <clears throat> okay, so we're describing this noun by an action that he will be completing. Not, it won't be done to him, and it won't have happened in the past. He'll do it in the future. You good? Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, guys.